Modern Warfare 3 beta just launched, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the best settings uh, for PC for your graphics uh, to make sure you get the lowest latency, the clearest image possible, less blurry, uh, no film grain, all that kind of stuff, just to make your game uh, look and play really, really great. So let's take a look at that. Uh, before we get into that, though, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the support, uh, but only about 5 to 10% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel that watch my video. So if this video helps you out, please consider dropping uh, a subscribe to the channel as well as a like and comment on the video. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and click on the little cogwheel to get into our settings. Uh, from here, before we get into the graphics, let's just go into the interface really, really quickly uh, and scroll down until we see telemetry. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I have up here. You can have all of these on. I personally run them all on um, when I actually play the game. But just for uh, purposes of testing your settings and stuff like that, I recommend having your FPS counter on, um, your CPU, or I'm sorry, your graphics card time, turn that on, as well as your CPU time, turn that on as well. You'll see those all up at the top. Uh, so you can actually see what the PC is doing. Um, and then from here, we're going to go ahead and go back and click on the graphics. We'll get into the graphics settings here for display mode. Most people are going to run, want to run this on full screen exclusive. I personally run on full screen borderless because I stream on Twitch. I tab out constantly, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I run this on full screen borderless, but if you want the most FPS possible, uh, as well as the lowest latency, full screen exclusive is going to be the, uh, the option for you. Um, if you are going to run on full screen borderless, as you can see when it's on here, your, your refresh rate and your display resolution are going to be locked out. So you can. Uh, quickly put on full screen, change these to the max settings, uh, your max refresh rate as well as your native screen resolution, and then put that on full screen borderless if that's what you want to run. Uh, or if you're just going to stay on full screen, you can just leave uh, leave those as is. Display monitor is just going to be your main gaming monitor. Uh, display adapter is going to be your main dedicated graphics card, not your integrated graphics if you have one for your CPU. This, you definitely want to make sure this is your dedicated graphics card. Uh, aspect ratio should be automatic for most people. V-Sync should be turned off for pretty much everybody. Uh, custom frame rate, um, unlimited. A lot of people run this on unlimited. Uh, I personally don't like to run unlimited because you'll actually max your uh, graphics card temperature and it'll just be running max temp all the time. It won't cool down. Your room's going to get really hot, max power usage, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I would recommend putting this on custom and then running the custom settings of 30, uh, or I'm sorry, 300 for when you're in game, 60 when you're just in the main menus, and 30 when you're uh, like tabbed out and out of focus. That way your graphics card gets a little bit of time to breathe in between games or if you're taking a little break and stuff like that. Uh, for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna leave this on unlimited though. That, you, that way you can kind of see the different values here. Display gamma, run this on 2.2. Um, brightness, we're gonna put this on whatever is gonna work for you. I personally run this on 55. Uh, it's really personal preference based off what your monitor looks like, all that kind of stuff. So just play around with that, see what looks best for you. Uh, constrain mouse to game window. Uh, this is mainly for mouse and keyboard players. If you don't want to accidentally put your mouse off the screen, you can turn this on, but most people have this turned off. Uh, focus mode, turn this off. NVIDIA uh, reflex low latency. Most people are going to this, run this on on and boosted. Um, it's really just in case you're CPU bound, which is why we have these GPU time and CPU times up. So you can see if you're either GPU or CPU bound. Um, but when you look at this, the description for it, it's essentially when you have it on, on and boosted, if there's any point in time where your CPU bound, which means if your CPU time is higher than your GPU time. So let's say for instance, my GPU time was four milliseconds and my CPU time was 10 milliseconds. That's going to be a CPU bound situation. And we're going to want it be, be on and boosted. Um, if it was the opposite where, um, the CPU time was really low and the GPU time was really high, you might want to turn this to on and you might get a little bit better performance but most people are going to probably want to run on on and boosted. And then you're going to go ahead um, and before we apply these settings, one last thing here I brushed over um, is the restart shaders preloading. You're going to want to click on this and hit restart. That way um, all the settings that we do once you reset your game, because you are going to want to reset your game after you apply any graphic changes. Uh, once you reset, it's going to re reload all your shaders, make it look good. Um, this kind of gives you an explanation here of um, why you want to do that. Um, I'm not going to get into it because the video would be 30 minutes long, uh, but just make sure you hit restart so that your shaders reload every time uh, or anytime you relaunch the game um, after you do changes to your graphic settings. So once that's all set, you would hit apply down at the bottom and go over to the quality tab here. Um, quality presets, just so that everyone's on the same page and it makes most of the settings already changed where they need to be. Just set this to minimum. There are some changes we're going to up uh, so that way the game looks better. We just set it to minimum to start off with render resolution. We're going to set this to 100. So it sets it to your native render resolution, minus 1440p. You just want to make sure 
it's at 100 for you. Dynamic resolution, most people are going to want to turn this off unless you're really, really struggling to get FPS. I mean, if you're only getting 30, 40, 50 FPS, you might want to consider turning this on. Uh, but for most people, you want to turn this off. Um, and even for those people that are getting struggling to get FPS, if you're noticing that it's your GPU that's limiting you, uh, I'd probably still leave this off and actually change your upscaling. Uh, for most people, I'm going to recommend using scrolling down to Fidelity FX CAS. This is going to make the game look incredibly sharp. Uh, it's, the game's going to look really, really good uh, with Fidelity FX CAS. Uh, but if you are really struggling to get FPS, then you can try out NVIDIA DLSS, XESS from Intel, uh, AMD FSR, that kind of stuff. But your game is going to be quite a bit blurrier um, and not, not going to look as uh, as sharp. So. Just something to keep in mind if you are really struggling and you notice your GPU time is significantly higher than your CPU time, some of these upscalings uh, might be better for you, but Fidelity FX CAS is going to make the game look incredible. So choose that um, and then up the strength. I personally run it at 100. You can run anywhere from 50 to 100, uh, but just that way it looks nice and sharp. Anti-aliasing, we're going to want to put this on Filmic. Uh, this game is pretty much exactly like Modern Warfare 2, where if you have it on the default uh, no, non-filmic, you're going to get a lot of um, dots and weirdness on some of the shadows and, and the walls and stuff. So make sure this on filmic. Um, for the anti-aliasing, we're going to put this on low. Um, if you're on 1080p, you might be able to run this on normal or a lower resolution 1080p. You probably want to put this on normal. But for most people, um, you're going to want to run this on low. For VRAM target scale, most people can leave this at 90. Um, I know... It's, it's really just based off VRAM, and I have plenty, so I know I could run this at like 60 or 65 and be perfectly fine, but most people just want to run this at like between 80 and 90. Um, if you have this too high, you can kind of read the descriptions here if you have any questions or anything like that, but um, I would say leave this at 90 for most people. If you're getting hitches and stuff in other game or other um, programs you might have running, you might want to lower it down a little bit, but I'm going to leave it on 90 for now. Variable rate shading, unless you have um, a lower MPC, I'd probably recommend leaving this to off as well. Texture resolution, most people, as long as you have at least six uh, gigabytes of VRAM, um, I'd put this on normal. It's not going to affect FPS too much, but it's going to make the texture of the game look a lot better. And since it's multiplayer, you kind of you, you want to make things look a little bit better because FPS is going to be a bit higher than in something like Warzone. Uh, so I'd run this on normal if you have at least six gigs. If you have less than six gigs or you just want the max FPS possible, think about low or very low. Uh, texture filter, leave this on low. Depth of field turned off. Detail quality level, make sure that's on low. Particle quality resolution, very low. Bullet impact, make sure that's turned off. Persistent effects, also turn that off. Shader quality should be on low. On-demand texture streaming should be turned off. Local texture streaming should be turned to low. Uh, shadow quality, very low. Screen space shadow should be off. Ambient occlusion should also be off. Screen space reflection should be off. Static reflection quality should be set to low. Uh, tessellation, turn that off. Terrain memory, we actually do want to keep this on max. Volumetric quality on low. Deferred physics quality turned off. Weather grid volume, you want to make sure that is turned off. And then water quality, make sure it is on default and hit apply. And then into the view tab, field of view, this is personal preference. Uh, I would say most people that play the game uh, at a competitive level or pros or anything like that are going to run this between about 95 FOV to 120 FOV. Um, I'm on 1440p with a 27-inch monitor, so I prefer 120. Um, but a lot of people run this right around the 105 mark. So just it's a personal preference. It's up to you. Obviously, higher, you're going to see more. Uh, but it's going to be harder to see at range, so it's just up to you. If you do up your FOV, which I highly recommend, you definitely want to uh, turn the ADS field of view to affected. Uh, weapon field of view and vehicle field of view, move those to wide. Motion blur, we want both of those turned off, so there's no blur at all. Uh, film grain, you want this set to 0%. This is a huge setting here. First person camera movement, we want this set to 50% least. It's going to default to 100, make sure it's on least. Uh, that way your screen doesn't shake as much from nades and shooting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, spectator camera, uh, I recommend game perspective and inverted flashbang. I personally run this on. Uh, that way my screen, if I get flashed, it's not a huge bright white. It's just turned black. Um, it's really personal preference. It's up to you. So once those are applied, you are all set to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close out of the game and get into the config file settings, uh, which is a very big deal for uh, Warzone as well as Modern Warfare 2, but also in this game. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that game and go to our config file. Uh, the way to do that is either on your taskbar or in the search bar, type in file folder or click on the file folder. You should pull up here, make sure you click on this PC. You should either see documents here or you can click on the documents here uh, and see a folder called Call of Duty. You might have a whole bunch of folders in here. Just look for the Call of Duty folder in your documents tab. Uh, double click on Call of Duty, double click on players. 
And then inside of here, you're going to see uh, a few different files. The one we're looking for is called options.3.cod23.cst. Not to be con confused with COD22. That is for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. Uh, COD23 is the one we're looking for for the Modern Warfare 3 beta. We're going to go ahead and single click on it. Um, right click. And we're going to open with, if you've never opened it before, you're going to open with. Um, and you may have to click on more apps, but we want to open it with Notepad. So um, if you have to open up, you might have to open up more apps and look for Notepad. Mine's at the top here. So click on Notepad and hit OK. That should open up the config file um, so that we can edit it. But before we do, we want to make sure we have a copy of this. That way, in case you make a typo or delete something or whatever the case is, you have a copy of it so that you can, um, you know, go ahead and fix that. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to hit Control A, uh, or you can go to Edit and hit Select All, which is Control A on your keyboard. That way everything gets highlighted. We're gonna go ahead, right click and copy or control C. And then we're gonna open up Notepad, a brand new Notepad. This is an untitled Notepad. We're gonna right click and hit paste. So that's an exact copy of our default config that after we've done those settings and everything like that. Gonna hit file and save as. Um, and then you can just type down here in the text, delete that little uh, asterisk at the bottom uh, and type in uh, copy of config file or something like that. Uh, make sure it's in your documents tab in you know somewhere in here and then hit save that way you have a copy of it We can close out of the copy and start making our changes So, so the first thing we're going to briefly talk about is something that we've seen in other games is the renderer worker count um, Unfortunately, there's just I haven't had enough time with the game The game just launched a couple hours ago since posting this video um, And it's really difficult without a in-game benchmark or without uh, more time to thoroughly test exactly what's gonna be the best render worker count for most people um, I'm assuming it's probably very similar to Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. Um, so if you've seen my previous videos, I have uh, a list of all the different render work accounts for all the different kinds of CPUs. You, if, if you want to, you can definitely try those out, see if those work best for you than whatever your default setting is. My default is 9. Um, I know in the previous game, 7 was the best for me, so I'm probably just going to leave it at 7 until I can get some more testing in. Um, so I'd probably just leave this as a default unless, again, like I said, you want to go ahead and check out my previous videos. Um, and see if any of the values that I've specified for your CPU uh, will work best there. But we'll go ahead and start with the first set of settings that I know actually work good for this game. It's going to be the Corpse Limit. This is a new setting for this new game. We're going to scroll down a little bit until we see the Gameplay tab uh, right here. It's going to be a little bit further down. Uh, it's going to maximum number of AI corpses. So it defaults at 28. I'd recommend lowering this down. You could do zero. Uh, I'd say probably three, five, seven, anything around there. Just lower than 28. Uh, just to free up so you don't have as many corpses on the map um, for AI in, in those instances. So I'm going to recommend three. Uh, the next one underneath that's going to be the show blood. That's actually going to be right underneath that setting. Uh, defaults to true. We're going to go ahead and change that to false. Um, and then the next one's going to be for show brass. That's a couple further down here, which is the weapons eject brass. We're going to change this from true to false. Uh, that way the little brass uh, casings that come out when you're shooting the gun uh, those aren't going to be blocking up space on your on your uh, your screen, and it's not going to take up resources to to render those in. So we're going to change that to false. Next one's going to be texture filter. Uh, it's going to be in the graphics tab. So we're going to scroll down until we find the graphics. Uh, it's going to be the third setting here under texture filter. We're going to actually copy and highlight the texture filter linear option. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and copy or control C, and inside of these quotation marks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit control V or paste so that way inside the quotation marks it max matches exactly uh, What we have over here. So we're going to have that on texture filter linear option um, The next setting underneath that is going to be the corpses calling threshold uh, right here It defaults to 0.85. We're going to actually lower this down to 0.5 So again copy and paste inside the quotation marks for that one uh, Next one's going to be the sun shadow cascade. So we're going to scroll down until we find the Sun Shadow Cascade, which should be right here. It defaults to high, two to three cascades. We're going to copy inside of the comma, inside of the bracket, the low one cascade option, and replace that again inside of the quotation marks up there. Uh, the next one setting is going to be Reflection Probe Relighting. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we find that. It defaults to four right here. We're going to lower that to the lowest option, which is one. Um, and then the final setting I'm going to recommend changing is for less motion blur uh, based off of how fast you're moving. So by default, it is set to true. We're going to go ahead and turn that to false to make sure every single bit of motion blur is gone. That way it's nice and clear, crisp, and ready to go for your gaming. Uh, that should be it for the 
config file. So the way to save it, you're gonna see this little asterisk next to the options up here in the file name. Uh, we're gonna hit file and hit save. When you hit save, you'll see that little asterisk goes away. That's how you know the file is actually saved out. Um, and you're, you're good to go to close this out and restart your games. Two other things I'm gonna recommend inside of Windows. One is gonna be for startup apps. So you can just type in startup apps uh, down here at the bottom. I've already typed it before. So it's, I can just click on it here. Uh, you're gonna wanna check your startup apps and make sure anything that you don't need is turned off. That way things uh, don't turn on randomly the moment you start your PC up. So you see Cortana, Epic Games Launcher, Overwolf, you, if you've had your PC for a very long time and don't have it very, very optimized, you may have a lot of programs in here that the moment you turn your PC on, they just start up automatically um, without you even knowing, without you wanting them to be on, they just start up and they run in the background and hog resources. So go into your startup apps, anything you know what it is, that you don't want running uh, when you start the uh, start the PC up, just turn them off. So Epic Games Launcher, I only use that when I play Fortnite. If I'm not playing Fortnite, I don't want it running, so I turn it off. Um, Spotify, everything like that, uh, anything that you might not need, you can just turn off there. And the next one is background apps. You can type it in or you can click on it uh, like I had there. Uh, in Windows 10, this is super, super easy to do. Um, there's a little toggle up here that's can disable all the background apps all in one go. So you can just go ahead and hit that, make sure all the background apps are turned off. That way they can't run or update in the background without you wanting them to be while you're gaming. You can just turn that off. In Windows 11, it's a little bit more difficult. You actually have to go individually, uh, click on and, and turn off all the different ones. I'd say it's probably worth it for most people, uh, but it is kind of time consuming. So that's gonna be up to you. But Windows 10, it's just a little toggle and make sure that's turned off. Um, but that should be everything for today's video. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging till the end. If you did, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe um, as well as like and comment on the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll, I'll have a more detailed and in-depth video coming out once the game actually launches. We can do some more benchmarks, more in-depth analysis of the exact settings, but these should be perfect for the beta for you. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Uh, I do my best to answer all the comments I can, but thank you guys so much. All my channel members, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.